Welcome to this installment of Brave New World on Context TV. Today we're going to try to make sense of the stock market. It doesn't seem to make sense though, does it? Well, I remember when I was studying finance uh, and we tried to make sense of the stock market, we broke it down uh, stock by stock. Now, a stock price is ultimately a reflection of future earning power. Whether you're using dividend cash flow model or the Gordon model, uh, to estimate the price today of a stock, you basically look at the numerator, which is some form of uh, revenue coming in, some kind of cash flow, and then you divide that by a denominator that represents some form of cost of capital. So to make sense of the stock market, basically, why is it rallying? Why is it going up when there's so much death and destruction all over the place? Um, the first thing to consider is that the cost of capital, interest rates, are pretty much uh, close to zero, meaning, generally speaking, if you take any number and you divide it by a number close to zero, uh, you get a higher uh, present value. That's one. Two, I think it's a bit more complicated than that. What you are now seeing is that indeed, uh, whereas the pandemic is going to take a very long time to contain and the recovery will take quarters, it's probably not going to kill uh, you know, tens of millions of people. It'll maybe not even kill millions of people. And frankly, while this is definitely not politically correct, most of those who will perish are older citizens who, you know, frankly, whose life expectancy was going to, um, you know, take them away uh, in, in a few years. Those people are going to suffer and, and leave us now, which is a, is a horribly, you know, bad thing to say. But, but again, the stock market doesn't necessarily care about the human side of it. It's just a, a vehicle to estimate the future, um, the, the present value of future earning power. Then it wasn't just the death comment, it was also on, on Kramer's show, you saw the, the headline, uh, best week since 1939 or 1938 in the stock market, juxtaposed with 60 million people lose their jobs, which sounds batshit crazy. Why? Well, again, not very politically correct. As much as two thirds of the economy is driven by uh, the consumer spending, meaning you do need uh, you know, consumers to have discretionary income, and we'll get to that in a second. At the same time, the biggest cost to companies has always been labor costs. Not politically correct, but having that much unemployed people is going to remove any kind of inflationary pressure on labor costs, um, meaning potentially more corporate profits. This isn't like the political correct hour. I'm just telling you why the stock market is behaving, I think, the way that it is. Another consideration is automation. Automation generally brings the promise of considerable cost savings. But socially speaking, it's not very palatable to say, well, you know, we're gonna replace all these employees with machines. Um, but now with the pandemic totally changing things, um, it's, it's almost like a welcome possibility to basically have less human beings due to physical distancing in a retail outlet. So I think that the stock market is viewing automation as accelerating and then combined with the high un unemployment rate, basically really not having a lot of inflationary uh, pressure on labor cost. Next, I think what you're seeing is as much as Donald Trump has proven to be totally inept, um, it's, it's ultimately signaling to markets that this is a government that will probably weigh more on the economy than the health you know, repercussions. It's not like they are going to totally let the economy get annihilated to save lives. Again, not a very nice thing to say, but the stock market probably likes that because they want you know, the stock market, that invisible hand, so to speak, puts an emphasis on you know, companies remaining in business, growing and whatnot. But finally, and I think this has not really been discussed that much, I alluded to earlier that two thirds of any economy is driven by consumer spending. Now that the entire Democratic uh, Party is you know, getting behind Joe Biden, I think the polls suggest that Joe Biden, again, anything can happen, but I think the polls are suggesting that indeed, Joe Biden will be a formidable challenge to Donald Trump. And if and when the elections happen, if a Democratic Party comes to power, they will probably maintain, introduce, 
and um, you know, come up with policy after policy to strengthen the American consumer. And ironically, very much the way President Obama in 2008 led the bailout of the automakers and ushered a, a great bull run from 28, 28 to 2020, I think that's ultimately the silver lining while why explaining why the stock market has been behaving the way it has recently. What do you think? 